Hi, my name is Vincent Payone. Uh, I wrote and directed the short, The Sea is Blue. <laughs> I came up uh, in the college humor circuit. Um, I was part of the original team that created original video for them. Uh, so I made a lot of comedy. And this project specifically felt very different for me. I wrote this film for my sister 10 years ago uh, when she was in a coma. And I always wanted to make it. When I finally hunkered down and wrote the script, uh, I, I realized that it was something that I wanted to share. I wanted to make something uh, evocative that took its time a little bit and got people thinking and was also just wholly a sweet story. I found myself wondering what my sister was up to while she was in a coma. The story for me is, is largely about appreciating someone uh, when you have a brush with losing them. I was fortunate enough to connect with some people who were just as passionate about the project as I was. The first step was fabricating these sets. They were expertly done by Lori Nix and Kathleen Gerber. From there we signed on an animation house, Neon Studios, that helped us actually bring the puppets to life. Simultaneously we were creating the puppets, which started with a metal frame armature, which was actually built in the UK. Custom clothing was made for the puppets themselves, and then we sculpted a face out of clay, which was hardened. And then Bean's hair specifically was actually goat hair wrapped over wire. All of those pieces coming together made for the final puppet. So once we actually had these physical things, it's time to animate them. So we brought them into Neon Studios, uh, brought some animators in. We were averaging a shot a day if we were lucky. The entire process took about seven months to shoot. You can very simply tell an actor to raise their arm. When making this film, it took just about all day. Faces were actually done in CGI, but borrowing a lot of the elements that we had photographed. Uh, for example, the textures that we physically made with the puppets themselves, with the clay faces, were actually, those, you know, those were grabbed and molded onto 3D rendered images. We shot the faces with tracking markers all over it. So a lot of our dailies coming in were pretty lifeless. Um, and then it was up to our, uh, our animators to to track those marks, to animate a face on top of those tracking markers, rig it, and they really did bring it to life. It was really, really cool to watch that process happen. I recruited my buddy Ramon uh, to make the soundtrack and he recorded a ton of odd instruments and mostly things he found on the street. We also used Herd City and helped us get this sound, which I think is just right for the film. They actually recorded a lot of sound effects underwater. Kudos to them for making uh, some, some really interesting sound design play into this film. I think the film reflects pretty much everything that uh, me, uh, Mike Healy, the animation director, and Josh Rubin, my producing partner, wanted it to be. I came out of it understanding animation better, so I think the growth that I experienced making this is my favorite part. Hi, Bridget here. It's so cool seeing how they go from story to wireframes to moldings to the animations. To see the final stop motion, click the box on the left. And if you already saw it, check out Hazel's One Take Christmas Spectacular. Click that box on the bottom right and see if you know all 12 Christmas films pictured. We would like to wish everyone a magnificent end to 2015. And don't forget to subscribe to see what we've been cooking up with Andrew Huang and Mr. Guitar Man for January. I'll see you then, and happy holidays.